Hi everyone. Welcome to episode 141. My name is Rachel. I can be found pretty much everywhere as well for pearls. As you can see, we um, live stream the show and we do that once a week on Wednesday mornings. If you would like to participate in the live stream, please come on over to patreon.com slash pearls and join. The live stream is open to everybody who is a patron. You can pledge a dollar a month, five dollars a month, fifty-five dollars a month, whatever works for you, and you can um, uh, participate in various things that we have going on in the community. And um, I hope that you think about joining us. So I am going to check the stream health just before we go any further. I was having some troubles with stuff this morning, but I think I got it all fixed up. Um, I was signed into a different um, thing and um, now everything seems to be working. So I hope the sound is okay. I've, we've changed the cables. We've done everything that we can. So hopefully we'll be good to go at your end. So if you guys want to let me know, um, that would be that would be great. Welcome to new viewers. Welcome to returning viewers. Thank you so much for being here week after week and for participating in the episodes and in the content as much as works for you. Um, I was just, I just finished up with um, our virtual spin group, which was really fun. And uh, we were talking about sampling and we were talking about all of the fun things um, going on in the community and in the greater community. So if you're interested in learning more about our virtual spin group, please head on over to patreon.com um, slash pearls. And um, if you have any questions about it, please let me know. You can always give it a try for a month and see what you think. And um, you know, there's no um, commitment past that month. You can um, edit your pledge and everything and try something else, but it is a really great way to get to know each other and to create community. So. I uh, hope that you will think about it. Um, on today's show, I don't have my show notes, so let me just grab them. Oh, good. Video's good. Sounds good. Awesome. Thank you so much for letting me know, um, you guys. We have an absolutely packed chat room today, which is fantastic. I know, right? <laughs> There's too many things to talk about. Um... So I wanted to mention at the top of uh, the hour, um, Rebecca, who's in the chat today, um, is going to be here with us next week. So if you sometimes aren't able to tune in or sometimes you're just, um, you know, can't make the streams work, try to be here next week because uh, Rebecca will be here with us for episode 142. So uh, please, 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 if you're able, we can give her a very warm welcome. And uh, yeah, it would be just so wonderful to have her here. Oh, hi, Eve. Good to see you. We missed you this morning. Um, and um, yeah, so that's really, really awesome. So I have lots to share with you guys today. Um, we've got chats about my comfort fade cardigan, which I just re realized I left in the other room. So I will run and grab that while the credits are running. We have tons to share from the community of stuff and reflections that you guys have been working on, which is amazing. The four ounces of pin drafted Shetland that is oh, right here behind me, we will be awarding that today from the February episode thread. We have another project from the February episode thread to share. Please go ahead and keep sharing in that thread going forward. We were asking the question, what is the item that you made that you love the most and wear the most and why? That was Amy's question. And um, we've got a new uh, giveaway for March. So I will announce that today. But I will keep sharing the projects from the February episode thread because it's been so inspiring. I think I've learned just as much as you guys, so, which is awesome. All right, let me go grab my knitting bag while we're running the intro um, credits because, um, well, it's got my knitting in it, so like we need that for the show. <laughs> so let me, let me run and do that and um, and we'll, we'll be up, up and on our way.
All right, let's go to community first. Oh, I'm sorry that you're so tired, Eve. That's really too bad. Um, we definitely missed you. All right. Okay, so for the uh, February giveaway, um, it's that pin drafted Shetland right there on my shelf. And Trin, I will mail both out this week. So you'll be getting your bat this week as well. Well, I'll be mailing it this week. You probably won't get it this week. Um, so the winner is, um, did I not put it in the show notes? Hang on. It's not here in the show notes. I think it's on Patreon. Let me just grab it off Patreon. Post number 37. It is Kelly, Coco Jane Handmade. So Kelly, if you could send me your mailing address, um, your Ravelry name is Coco Jane Handmade. Congratulations. Um, Post number 37, if you can send me your mailing address either on Patreon or on um, Ravelry, whatever works for you, and I will mail that out to you, the uh, Shetland right there. And we're gonna be giving out the same thing again for March because I have so much of it and it's such amazing fiber, but there's no way I'm ever gonna be able to spin all of it. So um, um, yeah, we'll have another four ounces next month. So for March, um, if you could answer the question in the March episode thread, um, what is your favorite yarn you've ever spun and why? So the project from our uh, favorite um, item that you've ever made and that you love and that you wear the most and why um, that I wanted to feature on this show was from Victoria, the queenly knitter, post number four. I'm just going in order of the posts every show. So like last week we had um, post number three and then... Um, you know, we'll just keep going in order till we're finished. Um, so this one, she says, um, hello, my favorite and most worn item is the range shawl by Andrea Mowry, which is the only garment made from almost 100% hand spun, which is amazing, Victoria. And it's deliciously warm. It looks warm. It looks amazing. So well done. Hi, Becca. Good to see you. Hi, Elizabeth. Good to see you as well. And Sarah's here. Diane Kelly, Charlotte Kath. It's so good to see you guys. Britta's enjoying a glass of wine. That's amazing. San is here. Um, thank you so much, you guys, for being here. That's just awesome. So well done to um, Victoria for that. And congratulations to Kelly for winning the Shetland. So we haven't done a uh, breed and color study for a while. And so I thought that we would do one today because... Um, I'm going to turn my camera off, otherwise we won't have any batteries for it later when we actually need it um, later in the show. Because um, we're trying something new with a different camera today for the um, product view, like when I show you guys on my table. So we'll see how that goes and you guys can let me know. So for breed and color studies today, I really wanted to share with you um, Kelly's yarn. And Kelly is Tomatil. She's actually in the chat today, which is fantastic. And... Um, um, I, this yarn is just so inspiring. So she actually killed two birds with one stone by um, doing breed and color study as well as her 51 yarn study. So Kelly is in group A for 51 yarn spin along that we have in the community. And if, you've, if you're a long-term viewer, you, you guys will know about the 51 yarn spin along. So we'll talk about that in just a second because I want to talk about our breed and color study right now. So technically our breed and color study that we've been working on for the last six months is ending at the end of this month. And normally we would have our next study starting April 1st. Um, but because of Katrina's die schedule and us needing to move things around, we won't be starting our next study until July 1st. So we're going to have three months from April through to the end of June where we're not going to have our next breed and color study starting up like we normally would. And we're going to be going on to a new schedule of, Ju of July 1st till the end of December and then January 1st through to the end of June. 
So we're hoping that the January fiber is kind of like a late Christmas present for yourself and the July fiber for Katrina for her dye schedule will be a lot more realistic in terms of getting it out in a timely manner, having that time and opportunity to design the colors in the spring after Fibers West is done. So, um... Yeah, so that is what's going on. So I will keep talking about reading color study from now until the end of June, but I actually thought that I would go back through our finished thread, which is all of the finished yarns, all the finished objects, everything that you guys have been working on and share um, some of those projects there because uh, from there, because we haven't really looked at some of those projects that were from older studies that never got shared um, on the podcast because we weren't doing a weekly podcast and there just wasn't time. So um, yeah, so this is Kelly's and I, as part of the How I Spin vlog that comes out every month for the co-executive spinners and everybody above that tier. So um, as the tiers escalate and get higher, you get more and more content because all of the content from the lower tiers on Patreon is all included the higher up you go. So um, the How I Spin content that's for everybody from the co-executive all the way up, um, I've been vlogging about my breed and color study. Um, so my there the part one and part two are up now and posted and available. Part three will come up later this month. Um, so if you're interested, the links are in the show notes. Um, on the blog wellforpearls.com or on Patreon, um, patreon.com slash wellforpearls. I know for a lot of you, there's just so much content and it's such a big community and it feels really overwhelming when you're first kind of coming here and um, learning about it all. And I, I hope it's not too repetitive, but I know sometimes it helps to kind of hear where is everything and, and how to navigate it all. So um, hopefully that's helpful. So this is Kelly's yarn. Um, Kelly is at Tomato, and this is post number 901 from the 51 Yarns Group A um, thread on Ravelry. So she lumped this breed and color study into our 51 Yarns uh, and went hog wild and did a five ply and a cable ply. So five ply and cable was from, oh my goodness, you guys. Was it cable and five ply? Was that November? Can, does somebody mind checking? <laughs> um, we've done so many months now because we're in like month 15 now uh, for group A. We're on like yarns like 27 and 28 or something. It's crazy. Anyways, her five ply is, this is the cable. The other photo is the five ply. She spun this short forward. The single she spun at about 21 wraps per inch unfinished. This is the five ply now. And then she plied and finished by soaking and thwacking. She figured the Polworth wanted to bloom, so why not? Absolutely, Kelly. Um, the finished yarn is about eight wraps per inch. It's also super heavy. I wouldn't want to make a big giant sweater out of it. Her grist is only 374 yards per pound. It's like nothing. Um, but I imagine it is incredibly warm. It'd be interesting to do a woolen yarn this way just to compare the grist. That's a, absolutely. I imagine if I ever did uh, make a five ply as a sweater, I would have to go that way lest it feels like I'm in a marathon wearing it. So true. All right, this is the cable. I think it's beautiful, this cabled yarn. It's just absolutely beautiful. Um, I had never made this structure before and I love it. I loved making it and the final effect. Some of my final twist isn't quite right, so the cable effect smoothed out, but there are definitely large sections that are just perfect. I was a little worried about all the colors combined with the cable ply, but instead of it looking like too much and everything gets lost, the ply structure actually helps the colors all stand out on their own. Absolutely. I think when you have that chain link effect, especially in those places in the yarn where you can really see where it works, where it just all worked out absolutely perfectly and the twist and the balance and everything is just that beautiful chain link, um, it does end up looking like sort of flecked almost. And it's just got that pop and that interest that the colors work 
Um, so yeah, absolutely. I can say for sure this is a yarn I want to get really, really good at making, so I can definitely see more cabled yarns in my future. I spun these singles at 28 wraps per inch, with the two ply yarns being 16 wraps per inch and the final finished cabled yarn at 12 wraps per inch, which is a heavy sport. Um, heavy sport light DK. I think the cable structure definitely helps keep the yarn from blooming more than it would have, where I was kind of ambivalent about the five ply and the extra work needed for not much payoff. All the extra work for this cabled yarn not only was totally worth it, but it was also fun. Very cool. And actually, Kelly, I'm curious um, if you're gonna knit some swatches with these yarns, because I'd be very, very curious about that. Yeah, it does look beachy, doesn't it, Mary? Yeah, great way of describing it. So thank you, Kelly, for sharing. Oh, and I love your, your pictures. They're beautiful. All right, this is group A. So this is our uh, 51 yarn spin along. And I'm not sure if Meg is in the chat today because she was possibly going to have to be, she might, might be working in the hospital today. Um, she's a physician. Yeah, so she doesn't think that she'll be able to make it today. She wrote in the um, in the Slack. Um, so this is um, Meg's. Um, Megan is uh, at Likey Meg, and this is post number nine hundred sixteen from our fifty one yarn spin along. Um, for those who are new, I don't go into too too much detail in the show because I know we've talked about this before. But our fifty one yarn spin along is based on J C Boggs Faulkner's book Fifty One Yarns to Spin Before You Cast Off, and um, we've been slowly working our way through. And there were so many people in the community that were so excited about this um, and about this spin along that they um, wanted to be able to participate didn't participate in the first year and wanted to start the second year because this is a spin along that's going over two years, 24 months. There are so many yarns to spin because it's called 51 yarns. You're spinning 51 yarns. Um, so we are currently halfway through the book in group A. We are currently going the wrong way. Um, so I've been, so w w what we've been doing on the podcast is featuring, you know, various, um, projects people have been working on. So this is our, uh, yarn number 19. These were the tweed yarns and Megan loves tweeds and she makes them all the time. And, um, she shared a lot of them in the Slack channel and she shared them on the Ravelry group. So I wanted to read what she wrote cause she deserves, um, a little bit of, a a uh, shout out for her tweed yarns. Um, oh, lovely tweeds. This was the first thing I wanted to spin. I love tweeds and wanted to make my own. I like the Grace Shalom Hopkins definition of tweed, which is a blend of different fibers, colors, and textures. There are some tweeds that I have made. Here are some tweeds that I have made. So on the bottom left, she made the Swancho. The main gray color is a tweed made for on the drum carter with gray Romney as the base and a lot of uh, Cambria fiber art soft silk that came dyed in green, blue, and purple, and it was a blend and blended on the drum carter. Number two was her vest with braids. So this was her first. So this is the one that's right here. It's the brown one with the braids that go up the front. Um, this was my first sheep vest. The tweed was blended on my blending board and then taken off in roll eggs. The base is hand combed by me, like by Megan. Um, it's a CVM plus some camel down. And then she cut up bits of dyed BFL and merino and blended them in as flex. She then combo spun the braids in the same merino flex and some alpaca. It is cool to be able to use the same flex and accent color. You can't buy that type of thing. No, you can't. <laughs> Um, number three, her mountains vest. This is a combo, combo spin of about eight different braids, eight braids, all different cut fibers, merino, BFL silk. I randomly blended pieces of them together on the drum carter and it gives me different textures and colors. And that's the one at the top of the photo. And her last one was her plain tweed cardi. It's not really that plain, it's beautiful. Um, the brown background color is a tweed made up of the base of Murat, Shetland, and yellow Romney, and then dyed by me silk oil in white rust and blue. She loves tweeds. <laughs> All 
that vest of hers is something else. Absolutely, Charlotte, it is. It's beautiful. All right, so this is group B. So group B um, has uh, been working on fine and medium wools and long wools and down wools. And in March, they are gonna start looking at double coated wools. So this one is from Nicole. Um, and on Ravelry, she's at Nicole Veretti, post number 159. So finished her fine, which is in brackets purple, and medium, bracket orange, wools. That orange is absolutely beautiful. Your spinning in that, Nicole, is just, at, not that your purple one's not gorgeous as well, but that orange one, you nailed it. Um, your twist angle and just the look and the loft, you it just, oh, it's perfect, perfect. Um, not that the purple one's not beautiful too, but that orange one, I wanted to give you a shout out and just say kudos because that you did just a beautiful job on that yarn. Um, so for the medium, she used a braid of merino and for the medium, sorry, for the fine, she used a braid of merino and for the medium, she used a braid of Jacob. Both were 100 grams. A lot of people, both in group A and group B, used Jacob as their medium and it was really nice to see because Jacob is kind of one of those fibers that, uh, one of those wools that isn't really super common. Um, and I thought a lot of people would end up using like BFL or Coriadale because they're just easier to get. And it really made my heart sing that a lot of people ended up doing Jacob, which is amazing because it's one of my favorite wools to spin. Um, Jacob, Shetland, Romney, those are some of my favorites. I spun the Merino short forward and the Jacob short backward. Both were two ply. I ended up with both finished yarns at about 14 wraps per inch. I'm super happy with both yarns and I think I love the Jacob way more than I thought I would. Yeah, because you nailed it. <laughs> um, it's very light and airy and softer than I thought it would turn out. I haven't gotten the final yardage for them yet. Yeah, well done, Nicole. You just really nailed both of them. So um, yeah, well done. Okay, while this is running, I'm just gonna uh, bring up our other camera. And this will just take a minute while it um, while I get it set up. And then we'll switch the cameras around and I'll show you my finished yarn. Oh, that's interesting, uh, Mary. So she said the yarn harlot talking about Jacob is what started the spinning bug for me. That's so cool. That is really neat. Okay, camera working, yes, nailed it. Um, all right, let's talk about my, do you guys wanna talk about the Comfort Fake Cardi first or do you wanna talk about this yarn first? I don't mind, um, both are equally interesting. You guys can let me know. Oh, I didn't know that, Kelly. I'm gonna have to talk to you because um, if there's a flock nearby, and you're just in Edmonton. Mm. You're absolutely right, um, Rebecca. She said, Meg, you're just amazing. Absolutely. We are so lucky to have her as part of our community. Um, she's so wonderful. Oh, the comfort first. Okay, perfect. And you guys all wrote that at the same time. So that makes my makes my heart sing. Um, I have been struck again and again and again this week. It's been like one of those weird weeks of um, just really feeling a lot of gratitude. And um, um, we've had some nice weather. We had a lot of rain for a couple of days there. And then for whatever reason, for the last couple of days, probably the last three days, I've just had this like overwhelming, like overwhelming feeling of gratitude. Um, and I don't know where it's come from or why, or um, I'm participating in a research study right now and I, I don't know if it's like a little bit of that and just being really thankful um, for the people in the world that are doing amazing things um, and just being struck every day over and over and over again by by this sort of awareness that, that there are so, so, so many people in the world doing such great things. Um, so I think that's part of it. And then you guys and how supportive you are of one another and inspirational and motivational. And I don't know, I've just been really like overwhelmed, like to the point of getting emotional um, by this feeling of gratitude. Um, yeah, I just, ah, uh, anyways. Um, Hopefully it shows, I don't know. <laughs> um, so anyway, so I started working on this um, a while ago, obviously, and I, I spun all of the yarns for it. 
And then over the weekend, I really wanted to get the swatches done. And so I'm just gonna give you guys a little bit of background sort of to help you understand a little bit about sort of how I work and um, how Felicia and I work together when we're coming up with um, ideas for workshops for me to teach for the School of Sweet Georgia. Because Felicia has so many people um, that are sort of in the works to contribute to the school and people locally and people not local and it's so inspiring. Um, and it gives me an outlet to be able to put together a workshop and to be able to teach without actually having to travel anywhere or, or, or having to commit to actually being like at a retreat or at a conference or something. So this fiber and these um, braids, her and I had had this sort of brainstorming session um, at Knit City back in October. And um, there was the three braids. There was the 100% the Gotland, which is this one, the Superwash Targi, and then there's the uh, merino alpaca silk which I'll show you in just a sec and we the original plan was to sort of do these three braids and to spin them up and to talk about sort of why I had chosen to spin each of them the way that I spun them and then to put it together in sort of a spin to weave kind of a workshop idea but the more that I spun and the I was so inspired by the colors because they're all the same colorway but because of the different fibers and the different wool um, of course the dye took up in each one differently. So you can see from the knitted swatches like how different they are, right? Like the Targi is really bright and it really preserved a lot of the acid dye brightness. And then this one's a little bit more pastel, a little bit softer. Um, and because the alpaca takes the acid dyes very differently. And this was alpaca merino lace. Um, and then the Gotland, of course, because the base of it is already dark, you end up with this really dark, um, um, color but you can still see the um let me just move this a little bit you see how there's still the um the color in there um you know you can still see some of the dye so the overwhelming color I never get phone calls. I'm getting a phone call. Um, you can see the, the the nuances of the color are still in there, but that really, really dark gray brown is still sort of overtaking the fiber, um, which is really beautiful. And you can see on the yarn there, especially with it blurred, actually, um, you can really see how the color sort of um, is very subtle, right? And it's dark and it's moody. So... Um, The what I was going to say about that is that sort of over the course of making these yarns and working with these yarns, um, I, I, I texted her and I was just like, you know, Felicia, like, I really think we need to talk about what we're going to do for the school and for the workshop and whatnot. And so what I'm working on is a yarn substitution workshop. And I'm really excited about it. Um, so I swatched up all the yarns to see how they would um, knit up. And these are all done on four millimeter needles. Now, Andrea Mowry's pattern is, um, if for those who haven't seen it, I'll pop it in really quickly. Is it this one or this one? I feel like it's this one. Nope, that's not the one. <laughs> are you sure you want to remove? Yes. <laughs> Uh, maybe it's this one, but if not, I will grab a different, nope. I'll try one more time. Um, so for those who haven't seen this cardigan, I'll show you really quickly, uh, what it looks like. I'll show you the back. Um, this is the Comfort Fade by Andrea Mowry. And what is so cool about this cardigan and why I thought that it would work well for this is that it will, it will um, you know, showcase the different yarns as you move through. So while I really like Andrea's version because it's just got that gorgeous teal at the top and then it goes into the gray, which I think Sarah um, is doing it with from yellow down to gray in her hand spun. She's been swatching for it and talking about it in the Slack channel, which is really cool. Um, so 
this pattern and sort of the blueprint of the pattern is going to be um, is going to move through through the colors. So the the sequence of the colors is actually going to be, and I'll show you in just a sec because I've started knitting. Um, is actually going to go from light to dark. So the dark is going to be at the bottom, and the targi will be through the middle. And then and the opportunity here for 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 me uh, with the course is to showcase sort of what you can do with hand spun yarns and sort of how to use a commercial knitting pattern um, to substitute your yarns and to work them in. So in terms of gauge, I hadn't actually um, um, said the stitch and row count yet, Kelly, so thank you for prompting me. Um, the, the stitch count and the row count of each of these. So I'm not too worried about the row count. And the reason why is because I can go based on lengths and inches. Um, so I don't need to, I can, because it's a raglan construction, I can sort of work from the top down and stop when I need to, uh, separate for the sleeves. And it doesn't really matter what my stitch count is. Cause it's not like you're dealing with like cables and lace and, um, you know, texture patterns and whatnot. Now I'll talk about that some more in the, um, uh, workshop. And we're also going to be doing, um, yarn substitution for, uh, April, May, and June in the How I Spin content. So there's going to be some overlap um, there as well. So the reason why I don't worry about the row count particularly is because you, you, it, as long as you can sort of try on the sweater, even a bottom-up construction you can try on, um, you can, um, you know, stop knitting when you reach a certain number of inches. And some patterns will say, you know, knit straight for... 13 inches, which is helpful if your rows, your row count doesn't match the pattern. The other thing to be aware of, if it says like knit, you know, four rows and then increase, like if you're doing like waist shaping or whatever, if your row count is off, you need to adjust that. So if you know that over an inch, that the pattern over, you know, seven rows is an inch and yours is only five inches and you want your um, your waist shaping to match up on your body properly, you're going to have to adjust the number of rows that you include. It's a little bit more advanced in terms of like sweater modification. But for this, my stitch gauge, um, which was what I was the most concerned about, with each of these is within one stitch. Thank goodness. So on four millimeter needles, my stitch gauge on each of these is basically the same. Um, this one was like 19, this one was 20, and this one was 21. Perfect. So I think when I do the bottom of the sweater, um, I'm knitting this on four millimeter needles. I might go down to 3.75 millimeter needles just to finish it off because you can see that this is a little bit, a little bit thin. And even with washing and blocking, it didn't really fill in the spaces. Part of it's because it's so dark. So I started knitting, and this is the fabric so far. Isn't that beautiful? So this is the top yoke. The cast on edge is up here, obviously, and I've got the raglans going down. And I don't generally like the, I don't generally like reverse stockinette very much. I, I much prefer personally um, stockinette. Um, but th this pattern, obviously, to create the um, the fade and to create that sort of um, um, te you know, look, it's reverse stockinette with these gorgeous um, knit stitches. So you purl these on the wrong side and, and knit them on the right side. This is the right side. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just, it's got a really lovely aesthetic. So when it's washed and blocked, um, it'll, it'll, it'll be really lovely. So this is the alpaca merino silk, and that's the yarn for those who haven't seen it yet. Um, that's the yarn for those who haven't seen it. So this is knitting up on four millimeter needles. Isn't that gorgeous? And this ended up being, I have my yarn statistics actually, if you guys wanna know what the final yarn was. Let me see if I can pull it up. Okay, so I have it all for the uh, for the course and for the how I spin content, so it's all there. Um, okay, so my total yardage for 
Okay, so my merino alpaca lay, silk ended up being 512 yards. The superwash targi ended up being 468 yards. It was 12, it was 1700 yards per pound. This was 1800 yards per pound. And the Gotland had the least amount of yardage and it was 344 yards and it was uh, 1,250 yards per pound. Yeah, the fabric, I'm really happy with the fabric, Sarah. Yeah, it's so lovely. Yeah, it's true. I know you guys always wanna know the yarn stats. So this one was right smack in the middle at 1,700 yards per pound. This one, as we would expect, we had predicted that this would be a bit heavier. It's a denser fiber um, and it it's um, 1,250 yards per pound. And then this one was the lightest at 1,860. So just exactly what we had predicted. This ended up with the most yardage at 512. This was very close behind at 468. And this one was um, 344. And these were all 125 grams. So my total yardage for the um, for the sweater is 324, sorry, 1,324 yards in total, um, 375 grams in total. And um, let me just pull up really quickly. And because, so the pattern calls for um, I'm just going to pull it up because I don't want to give misinformation. The pattern calls for, uh, for the extra, extra small, which is a 33 inch bust. It calls for 1310 yards. You're supposed to use four, uh, skeins of yarn. Um, but I'm only using three colors. So I am going to work my fade pattern in, in a slightly different way to sort of compensate for um, the fact that I've only got three colors instead of four. So that's part of the yarn substitution and making patterns your own and, and learning how to do that, right? Like when you're working with hand spun, you aren't necessarily going to have the exact same yarn, you know, and the exact same uh, yardage and the exact same sort of colors and all of that kind of stuff. So um, that was part of my um, teaching around sort of this, how do we substitute yarns in a slightly more complicated way? Um, not just how to measure them. Um, the reason why I'm making the extra, extra small is because, um, so the pattern calls for because my original plan was to make the extra small because that's for a 36 inch bust. Um, my bust is 33 inches um, and, and my upper bust is 32 inches. Um, and so I was sort of thinking that would give me like two to four inches of positive ease. And on Andrea in the photos, um, she says that it's, she knit the extra small sorry, in size small on a 34 inch bust. So, which gave her a positive ease of four inches. Hang on. Yeah. 34, yeah. So she knit the size small, which is a 37.5 inch bust. And that gave her four inches of positive ease. Um, so, and the gauge for the pattern, just give me a second to sort of work this through verbally. Her stitch gauge is 21 stitches per inch um, and mine is slightly bigger. So the size small, extra small, sorry. Okay, so confusing. Um, this is why I like it when designers, knitwear designers, um, do size one, two, three, four, five instead of extra, extra small, extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, extra, extra large. Like it's just too confusing. Um, I would I would love to see knitwear designers go to like size one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like that would just be, that would make my heart sing. <laughs> um, so in the pattern, she's got extra, extra small, extra small and small, okay? So this small is a size 37 and a half inch bust. The extra small is for a size 36. And the extra, extra small is for 
um, size 33. So I, my bust size is 33 inches. My upper bust is 32 inches. This sweater that I am wearing, and the reason why I wore it today is because of you guys. And I know a lot of people struggle with sizing and which size to wear, and that's why I wanted to talk about this on the podcast. So this cardigan is the Marie Chen by Isabel Kramer, and you can see how big it is on me. It's it's really, really big. And I knit, and actually I was talking to Rosemary, um, who's part of our community this morning about it, um, because I really can't like modify it particularly like it's not like I can um sort of there's not a whole lot I can do to cinch it in it it's my hand spun um clen force that I did and it's totally wearable and it's totally fine I love this sweater and I wear it a lot um but it just it it grew a little bit when I washed it my gauge was a little bit bigger than the pattern called for and so because of that and knowing that my my gauge is a little bit bigger um with this as well. Um, I just think if I go down a size, then I'll probably end up with a sweater after washing and blocking and gauge does lie. Um, and when I, when I sort of, um, you know, have it all finished and just the weight of sweaters too, like they hang raglan, there's not as much structure, there's no seam. Um, and I don't like my stuff really super tight, but I also want it to fit nicely. Um, so that's why I went down a size and went to the um, extra, to the 33 inch bust. So confusing. <laughs> um, yeah, and if anybody has any questions um, about that, um, you can you can hop hop on and ask. I find that that's one of the biggest stumbling blocks too. I was gonna say about that, um, about about sizing for sweaters and which size to make. I find a lot of um, spinners, uh, knitters and spinners and stuff um, do struggle a lot with what size to to choose. And there's there's sometimes um, discussions and chat um, in the Slack channel about that because um, I think people do struggle um, to sort of figure out what size to cast on and 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 how to sort of work sizing. I think the absolute worst thing in the whole world for a knitter is when you spend all that time knitting and you try on the sweater and it's much too much too small. Do you know what I mean? Like if it's a little bit too big, you can kind of get away with it. Like this sweater on me, like I can totally get away with it. I can wear a, a heavier shirt underneath and it's fine. Um, it doesn't look terrible by any stretch. Like I'll, I'll stand up so you guys can see it. But like, it's fine, you know? It's it's definitely like big. Um, but like Isabel Kramer, Isabel Kramer is the designer. And um, if you look at her um, samples that she models, she always wears her stuff with a ton of positive ease. Um, and it, it just, you know, it, it sort of hangs on her um, and it suits her. Like it suits her style and it suits her look and, and it just kind of works. Um, and I have definitely found over the last six months to six to nine months that my style is definitely changing. Um, so, you know, I think that's part of the reason why I'm so happy with this is it was okay that it had that extra ease. Um, and then with something like this, where you're actually like teaching and you're doing like yarn substitution and more formally kind of going through these exercises with people, I think it's nice for people to kind of, you know, learn how to do some of that tweaking and that playing with your gauge when it's not absolutely bang on. Because when you're working with your hand spun and you're working with three different fibers, three different yarns, um, that yes, I spun them all the same, but they are ever so slightly different and they're not going to be absolutely bang on um, in terms of like being exactly the same because they're different fibers. Um, you know, it's, it's sort of good to learn how to be flexible and, and, and sort of be able to compensate for that and still use a pattern that you're really excited to knit and it's been in your queue for a long time and so on and so forth. Agreed, Rebecca, way too big is depressing as well. That's true. Yeah, 
I was meaning like if it's sort of within the realm of wearability, then it's a win. You know, if it's a little bit too big or a little bit too small, you can still wear it and you can get away with it. But I think when it's on the smaller side, it does make it more challenging. Like if it's something that like you can't even button it across the bust or it's pulling really super badly and you don't feel, you know, really excited to wear it, you know, that's when it's really too bad. So... Yeah, so that's the Comfort Fade. I knit a whole bunch of this last night at Guild Executive because we were having um, a big meeting around Guild Visioning and whatnot. I wasn't feeling great. Um, and so I just sat and knit and knit and knit. So I think I did like probably like half of the yoke, um, which is really nice because it means I actually have some fabric to, sh to show you guys. And you can definitely see there's that underlying striping in there from the original colorway. Um, I don't love that, but it is a nice way to show off the yarn for sure. And that's really the, the purpose of this sweater is to show the yarn um, and what you can do with the yarn. So when it's on, it'll look like this. And remember too, there's that shawl collar. So that'll um, help to not hide some of it, but, but to sort of bring that cohesiveness to the sweater. Not pretty. So yeah, really pretty, really, really, really lovely. I'm really happy with this, really happy thus far. So yeah, you guys can kind of see it up close there. And it is loose drapier fabric than I would maybe normally knit. Um, and part of the reason for that is just um, um, not wanting a really super heavy cardigan. Um, I find the cardigans that I wear the most that I make um, are the ones that are a little bit looser knit because they're not quite so hot um, because I am such a furnace. So, all right, let's talk about my, my uh, spinning that I finished. Yeah, they totally, Eve, to answer your question. So Eve says, um, aren't oversized raglans prone to falling off your shoulders? Um, I think in, in some people that's definitely an issue. I have quite, quite substantial shoulders from swimming. So I personally haven't had that issue, but like a friend of mine, her shoulders are, um, she's just, she's just built differently from me and her shoulders are sort of more like slopey. Um, and she finds that like if her raglans are, are too loose and too baggy that they just fall off. I do find because this sweater, um, I keep motioning to this sweater cause I'm wearing it right now. I cut my finger when I was doing meal prep this morning and it keeps catching on, on everything. Um, I do find that I, I tend to button this. Um, so that it stays in the right spot. Because if I unbutton it and I wear it kind of more open, um, it does kind of tend to fall. But I really like that too, because then if you've got like a, a shawl on, um, that's a really nice look as well. So, but yeah, I wouldn't want it to be too big. Like if this was any bigger, I'd probably think about ripping it out. Um, but I am going to try to shrink it. That's part of what Rosemary and I were talking about this morning was... Um, um, I'm going to rewash it and I'm going to throw it through the spin cycle on the washing machine. And then um, I might actually put it in the dryer for just a minute or two, like just like a very tiny amount of time, just to see if I can bring it in a little bit. <laughs> it feels like archery, so many variables to hit the target. You just learn how to read them all to know how to make a good shot. Yeah, it's so true, um, Rebecca. I think, you know, the more you do this and the more you make, you just kind of start to learn what works and what doesn't. And like one of the things that they're not super, super interesting in terms of like construction, but one of the things that works really, really well are raglans, you know, because you can knit from the top down, you can try it on, um, you can stop knitting when your yoke is the right measurement. Like they're for, from a beginning knitter, Beginning garment knitter perspective, they're a really great option. Yeah, it's so true, um, Sarah. I think the proportion, if the proportions are right, there is a range of what looks good, fitted to larger but not sloppy looking. Absolutely, I. That's you summed it up, Sarah. That's sort of what I was trying to say, and not doing a great, a great uh, job. So yeah, absolutely, I agree. Yeah, there's a difference between roomy and I'm wearing my grandma's sweater and yours just looks comfy and roomy but not strangling you anywhere. That Yeah, thank you, Diane. That's that's absolutely, yeah. If it's too big, it's a car coat. Yeah. 
Yeah, so thank you. I, you know, I wear my, like we've talked about this on the podcast quite a bit. I know a lot of you are in the same boat as me. You know, we're moms and we're running around and the last thing that I want to be doing is pulling at too, too tight clothing, right? That's why we talk about fit so much on the show and, um, you know, talk about this stuff because um, it's, it's, it's a big deal. Um, you know, fit is, fit's very individual. It's very personal. Um, and I think the more we talk about it, the more we can help each other to get a nice fit on our sweaters. So this, these are the first two skeins um, of my really big spin and I left the fiber in the other room. So do you guys want me to go grab it? Because there's two other yarns that are fiber, fibers that are going with this spin and this is a big spin. Um, there, all of the yarns for this are gonna be three ply. So this is Crafty Jack's Fractured Dawn and this is Crafty Jack's uh, Pasuta. So I just finished this yesterday. It came off of the e-spinner and um, these are yarns for a bigger project and um, I'm going to actually um, uh, write an article for Ashford about the e-spinner and about these yarns and okay Rebecca I'll go and grab them um, and so Katrina and I kind of put our thinking caps on and we're chatting on Skype one evening and trying to figure out which colorways would look really nice together so um, I had these two in my stash and these are both Targi Bamboo Silk Blends 80-10-10 and um, which always makes me think of the 80-10-10 diet um, that's a thing um, and uh, so that this is a, and they're all going to be spun differently. So let me go grab the other two and then we'll talk about the plan, if you will. So I'll be right back. So these two are, are, um, a hundred percent Targi. So this is Pacific Blue, and there's 200 grams of that, and that'll be three ply. And then you guys know what this colorway is, because if you, well, and if, if you're new, you won't, but those who have been in the community for a while know exactly which colorway this is. So this is Arctic Berries. This was part of our uh, breed and color study that we did. These were two of the of the three colors from that um, from that study. So these are Targi, the Pacific Blue and the Arctic Berries. And the reason why her and I chose these colors, some of you may have already figured it out, um, but if you look at the colors that are in these colorways. Um, there is a color from all of them in all of them. So the blue is in Pasuta, Fractured Dawn, and the semi-solid. This is basically solid, let's be honest. Um, there's some tonal dark, darker areas that are sort of tonally a little bit darker, but, but overall it's sort of a, a, a solid. Um, so the blue is in all of them. And that's what ties Pasuta in, is that the blue is in all of the colors. And then the purple is in Fractured Dawn. And the green is in Fractured Dawn as well. Um, so there's sort of that, that commonality linking these colorways together. And yet, um, they're all so different. Um, and they're being spun differently. So this is a blended three ply. This is a three ply fractal and I don't know what to do with this one. It has to be three ply. I don't want to do chain ply. So I'm thinking that it will be a um, traditional three ply because um, I think what I might do is strip it lengthwise three times like that and spin each end to end. and spin each end to end and ply them. Cause this one was stripped down and stripped down and stripped down. It was a blended three ply. And then this one, of course, is a three ply fractal. Cause I wanted to feature three different yarns. And this colorway really suits itself to being um, sort of a traditional two ply, traditional three ply. Um, and we've talked about that on the podcast before with the fin study, because the one colorway 
the one spin for this one I did, um, this was for the fin study, I did a traditional two ply, the fractured dawn, I did a center pull two ply and the lake side, which was the third colorway for that particular study, I did a two ply fractal because I was looking at two plies for that. Um, and I'll show you in a minute what I'm doing with those yarns because they're um, part of my shift cowl that I'll show you in just a sec. So this is going to be a traditional three ply. And then I'll have three very different yarns. And the 200 grams is just going to be spun into a three ply. I'm just going to divide this up three times, spin it each to a bobbin and, um, and ply it. And it will be the background color for the shifty. That's the plan. Yeah, Arctic Berries is such a legend. It totally is. It's a legendary colorway. If you can have legend colorways, that's one of them. So that's what I'm doing. So this big, huge spin is taking a long time. Obviously it's taking like a lot of like, it's time intensive. Um, I need to have the spinning finished um, and, and the article written by the end of June. I don't know if I'll have the finished sweater, um, but I will definitely have the, the yarn done. Um, and um, you know, I think there's something like, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of a, it's a fun project cause it's very practical. Um, you know, and it, I, you'll get to chat with you guys about the process and sort of, you know, the experience of, of spinning something like this and doing a really big project like this. Um, but there is sort of that, um, you know, it's, it is a, not onerous, but, but when you're, when you're working with, with big amounts of fiber, um, you know, you, I think it's really helpful to have a bit of a vision. So one of the things that I was going to do while I start the spinning for Arctic Berries is actually to start to swatch these and to knit them and just sort of get a feel for them. Cause I suspect that through four millimeter needles is probably going to be a, the sort of sweet spot with this yarn. Cause it's very bouncy. I'll unskein this so you can, you guys can see, maybe you'll be able to see the movement of the fractal. See that striping in there um, from the fractal. For those who don't know what a fractal is, fractals are, are fractions of color. Um, you strip your braid so that you end up with, uh, you strip it like a traditional three ply, if you're, if you're doing a three ply. So you strip it like this into three, and then one of them you, you set aside and you spin it end to end. And then your second one you strip maybe twice, maybe three times, um, maybe four times. It depends on, you know, how many times you want to sort of um, break down. Because the thinner this is, the, the, the shorter distance that color is going to move through the yarn. So generally with three-ply fractals, I usually split the second bobbin um, uh, two or three times. And then your final one, you want to split like upwards of four, six, eight times. And you split it into little, little fractions like that. Um, so with this one, I might, I might split it six times. And then you ply the three bobbins together. And the idea is that as you move through that, that one big long chunk of blue because in the one that you didn't strip again that ends up being quite a long length of fiber um, as you move through that blue you move through multiple colors on the other two bobbins and you end up with these like fractions of color so you can see there's places in the yarn where all of the blue matched up and then there's places where it's two strands of blue with a brown um, there's areas where it's all brown <laughs> and the movement of the color was through through the brown. So when you knit these yarns up, um, I often do have snack projects that I spin um, while I'm doing a larger spin, Eve. That's a great question. Um, the Right now, um, I'm pretty much only working on like work spinning um, because I've got a whole bunch of samples that I'm spinning for teaching at Fibers West next weekend. Um, that's actually what I was working on this morning with Rosemary. And then I've got this going for Ashford and then I've got the Comfort Fade going for woolen spinning and um, 
sweet Georgia. So I feel like right now it's all like work spinning, but I've got the spinning for the Gotland, the Gotland Romney fleece to look forward to, the no frills um, cardigan. And um, I find that having a variety of projects really keeps me going and it keeps me motivated um, in a way that um, it, it almost kind of doesn't matter what I'm working on because it's like, well, if I don't really feel like working on that today, I've got this to work on. Or if I don't really want to work on that, I've got this. But if I'm working on a really big spin, like the Gotland Romney, once I'm finished all these other projects, that's going to be a big spin. It's going to go on for a long time. Um, that's when I get a little bit nervous because, um, and that's usually when I want to have like the smaller spins and the snack spins. And that's where 51 Yarns has been really helpful because then I can break it up with some smaller sampling without feeling like I'm completely losing uh, momentum. So this is the fractal, this is a fractal yarn um, knit up. So this was a three ply fractal and you can see how um, the colorway moves through each other. So there are areas where all the blues matched up, but only for a short period of time. And when you look really closely, you get these, um, you know, the red ended up being in there because it worked through the red and there's the yellow um, and a little bit of red again, a little bit of yellow in the blue, a little bit of red in the blue again. And that's sort of how fractals tend to um, knit up is you get this really beautiful striping and this movement of color through, excuse me, through the underlying colorway. And actually what I like the most about this is the brim. I love that movement of color through the brim. Isn't that gorgeous? This is the tuck stitch hat. It's a pattern on Ravelry. This was a test knit that I did for her. It's my favorite toque. I love it. And actually the reason why it's in here is because, and I think I put it away, I bought a pom-pom for it and uh, I need to sew it on. <laughs> so yeah, it's the tuck stitch toque. Um, and actually if you guys want to wait just a quick sec, I can post the link. It's one of my favorite patterns for toques. Um, I think she originally called it, oh, the Skip Hop hat. So she changed the name of it, the Skip Hop. It's it's a variation on brioche. So I put that in the um, uh, in the chat. So if you are not watching chat and you're watching this replay later, um, you can go in in there and uh, have a look. It's it's uh, probably scrolling past you now. So that's that project. And hopefully next week I will have some progress on my Arctic berries. I was gonna say I've been because I've been spinning this on my e spinner on my Ashford e spinner. Um, I've been spinning all of the singles to one bobbin, and then. Um, putting some fiber in between, like doing like a slub of thick uh, yarn um, in between my singles for one bobbin and then, sp and then spinning the bobbins for the next, the singles for the next bobbin and rather than switching bobbins out. Um, and then when I'm done the uh, spinning in like all of it, um, I've been winding off my singles onto weaving bobbins and then plying from the first spun end, and that's worked really, really well. So for this project, I've been doing that, and it saves me on changing bobbins out on the e-spinner, and um, I find it, it actually really speeds me up. It makes a huge difference in terms of how much I can get done. Because you're just not changing bobbins, like you just kind of keep on going, which is really great. Um, okay, let's talk about my shifty. So my shifty, another Andrea Mowry pattern. I seem to be on a roll right now. I'm not really sure why. Um, I am in the middle of a row, so I'm sorry about that, but this is some progress. I'm currently on the decreases, so I finally made it to the halfway point. I did rip back, um, so I think last time I was talking about how um, I was a little bit worried about yardage um, and that I was sort of running out of yardage, so actually I did go back and I ripped out. 
So part of our fin study way back in 2017 um, had been uh, combo spins, and that was the whole point of the of the study. So I had made some combo drafted yarn, or combo plied yarn, where I took the three colorways: Arctic Berries, Fractured Dawn, and Lakeside, and I had and I'd spun it up randomly and then and then plied it. So this is the combo plied yarn, um, and because I have so much of it, I kind of wish that I had used it for the background for the whole thing. Um, but I didn't, and I really like the effect regardless. Um, so when I got to the halfway point where I started decreasing over here, I realized that based on my yardage of what was left for my lakeside and my fractured dawn, that I probably wasn't going to have enough yarn to finish the cowl because it is quite a big piece. Like it's quite a lot of knitting. I'm actually really surprised. I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's been hard to put this aside for the comfort fade, I'll be totally honest. Um, so I actually ripped back to the beginning of the, the decrease section. I think it's like section four or section five, I can't remember. And um, this is now my background and will be my background for the remainder of the shawl. So when it says, you know, colors A and B for, for this section and then colors like B and C for the next color, I'm just gonna stick with this being the background color. Um, which will work out really well. So it's kind of changed the, the look of it a little bit from the first half to the second half. But on the other hand, um, because the yarns are all still the same, there's still sort of that cohesiveness, if you will. And it does add a little bit of interest. So, uh, like it is a cowl, it's not a sweater. So let me just focus the camera so you can see the detail. So this is done with a, uh, a slipped stitch pattern, sort of a type of mosaic knitting. Really, really effective. Not beautiful. I'm really happy with this. But I do, I have kind of had to put it aside a little bit um, to work on, on the comfort fade. But that's okay. Um, I'll work on it as I can. And, and like Eve had said about the snack knitting uh, or the snack spinning, um, this will be kind of my snack, my snack knitting. Now I wanted to share one more thing with you and I, I didn't put it in the show notes and we're over time because we always go over time. Um, there's just too much to share. Um, but the other yarn that was part of my fin study from way back when that I never knit with um, was the combo drafted yarn. So this was the yarn that I had combo drafted of the three colorways. So same three colorways. We have a theme here this month, people. Um, I had started to knit a um, triangular shawl out of this yarn and I just wasn't really super happy with it. And I, I actually was a bit concerned about, about running out of yarn before I had like a, a fairly decent sized um, object. So um, at work the other night, I cast on for the Infinity Chevron cowl. So this was inspired completely and totally by Maggie, um, who is a member of our community and is a beautiful knitter. Um, and so I'll knit until I run out of yarn. So is that pretty? I'm really happy with this. It's really pretty. <laughs> um, I don't have tons and tons of yarn, but I will have tons and tons of the combo applied yarn. So I sort of thought, well, if I, if this isn't long enough, when I get to the point where I run out of yarn, I might actually work in the combo plied yarn and knit until I run out of that. And it'll kind of be like two halves of the, of the cowl. There'll be the one half that's the combo drafted and the one half that's the combo plied. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty. Oh, my coffee's not hot anymore. <laughs> it's cold. Um, yeah, I think that was it. I think that's it for today. That's a lot of stuff. We've had a very full show. I hope that we talked about some stuff that was meaningful and that, that gave you some sources of inspiration and that, um, yeah, that I'm leaving you a little bit fuller than you were when you started out. 
Um, thank you so much for being here today. I really, I really appreciate your time and the energy that you guys spend and, and the time that you spend in the community supporting each other and just generally being amazing human beings. Um, in the Wool stream next Tuesday morning, which is our uh, live stream that we do uh, two Tuesdays a month um, on Tuesday mornings to talk about capsule wardrobe. Um, I will actually be chatting about what's on my dress form behind me, which is the Forager Vest by So Liberated. Um, this is my muslin, my wearable muslin. And I'm excited to uh, talk about that and, and to share that with you on Tuesday. So we'll look forward to that next Tuesday. And then the live stream next Wednesday, Rebecca will be here. So um, safe travels to Rebecca because she's going to be flying down from, from Baffin Island, from Rankin Inlet. And um, it'll be just so lovely to have her here. So, and Fibers West is next weekend. So if anybody is local, please come by and say hello. I will be teaching all day Saturday. Um, so I won't be around in the marketplace on Saturday. But on Friday, I'm lecturing at 1030 in the morning. Um, and I'll be lecturing about the book, about Unbraided. So um, it's an hour long lecture from 1030 till 1130. So please come by and uh, say hello. And if you see me in the marketplace, please don't hesitate to come up and say hi to me and Rebecca because we'll be, we'll be there all day. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that, to Fibers West next weekend. So uh, hopefully you guys will be checking that out. The festival is on Friday the 13th and Sunday the 14th. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, so I hope you guys will be will be coming if you're local. Yeah, time is totally flying. It's it's crazy. Um, time is flying by. I can't wait to see you virtually. That's great, Becca. Um, so supportive of Rebecca. Um, have a great weekend. Have an awesome um, couple of days for sort of the remainder of the week, if you will. Uh, let me know how the camera went and changing out cameras and just doing things a little bit differently. Um, let me know if that was um, helpful in terms of being able to see things. Um, I, I do appreciate it. I know we've been having um, color matching issues with the other camera. So I just thought, you know what, we'll try something new and just see how it goes. So please let me know. And um, until next time, happy spinning, happy knitting, happy weaving, happy all the things. Take care, you guys. Bye.